Today we're going to learn about something called user-defined functions inside PHP and this is the moment where we start moving into a little bit more of an interesting point inside our PHP lessons because user-defined functions is where we can start creating our own functions inside PHP in case there is some kind of function we need that isn't built into the PHP language. User-defined functions is something used constantly inside our code and I do mean constantly because we use functions in order to not have to rewrite code as well over and over again, because if I need a certain piece of code to do something, and then later inside my application, I need to do the same thing, instead of having to recreate the same code in two different places, we can use this user-defined function just to reference to it, so we run the same code, but the code is just sitting in one place somewhere. I do also want to point out here, because I do remember back when I was learning PHP, like 12 years ago when I took my bachelor's degree in web development, that the teacher would ask me inside the exam, so what do we use a user-defined function for? And I would say, well, we use it to do things inside our code. But the answer my teacher was looking for was, okay, so we need to use a user-defined function for one particular thing. So if you want to create a bunch of code, your function should not have a ton of code inside of it doing a lot of different things it should have one particular purpose in mind so don't use a function to store like an entire script inside of it it's just meant to do one particular thing we'll get to do a little bit more examples so you can see what i mean so you know not creating a lot of code um so what i want to do here to begin with is let's go ahead and just create a function just to see how do we create a function and how do we name it and how do we add parameters to it and then write code inside of it. Uh, so what I'll do inside my little PHP script here is I'll go in and I'll use the function keyword, which means that now we're creating a function and I want to go in and give it some kind of name. And you can name this function whatever you like. We can come up with any kind of name that we think is appropriate for this function. But there is, of course, some naming conventions just like with variables and that kind of thing. So the way we usually do it when we start a function is we start with a non-capitalized letter for the name. So if, let's say, I want to say say hello, then you can do something like this where every word after the first word is going to start with a capitalized letter. Or if you want to do it, you can also go in and say you want to use a underscore instead. Now, my personal preference is to do a capitalized letter because that's how I see most people do it. But it's really up to you. Like there's different naming conventions you can use here. After creating the name, we need to actually tell it that this is a function by adding the parentheses. And these are the same parentheses you see when we create a built in function. So if we were to go up here and say something like string length, then you can see that we can go in and actually get the length of a certain string. So if we were to say Daniel and echo this out inside the browser, we would get the number of letters, which would be six in this case here inside the browser. And this is what we need to use the parentheses for, because we can decide how many parameters we want to pass into our particular function down here, because this is our function. We can do whatever we want with this function here. So I can decide how much do I want to pass into my function. Now you can also just decide not to pass anything inside your function. So let's go ahead and go inside the curly brackets here, which is going to be where all the code is going to get run that you want to run inside your function. So I'm going to go down here and say, I want to echo a string. And I just want to echo out, hello world. So by creating this, we now have a function inside our code that we can call upon. So we're not actually running this code yet. We only run once we call upon it. So if we were to go inside my browser, just to prove my point, if we were to refresh, you can see there's nothing inside the browser. But if I were to go down here and actually run my code by running the function, I can go in and say we have a function called say hello, parentheses semicolon. And then I can simply run this function by saving, refreshing the browser. And then you can see we get hello world. And now we did use echo inside the function here, which is something you can do, but it is a very typical thing inside a function to not echo out a value, but instead return a value. Uh, so what I can do is I can go in and say return. And when I refresh the browser, you can see we don't actually get anything inside the browser. But instead, I would have to go down and actually echo our function. So if we were to go in now, you can see we get hello world. And one of the reasons for this is I can actually go in and create a variable. And I'm just going to call it test. And I'm going to set it equal to my function. And because I'm returning a value, not echoing a value, I am now actually going in and assigning hello world to my variable test, because this is the data that my function returns. So now if we were to go below here and say I want to echo out variable test, 
then you can see inside my browser we get hello world. But now we did talk about passing in parameters because we can do that and we can decide if we want to do it because it's our function. The world is ours. We can do what we like. Uh, so what I can do is I can go in and say, okay, let's go ahead and pass in a piece of data. Now I'm just going to use a placeholder for this data. So I'm going to create a variable and I'm just going to give it some kind of name. So this could be name, for example, which now mean that when you call upon this function down here, you can actually see we get a error message. It now demands that you pass in one parameter in order for this function to actually work. So if we were to go down here, you can see that if I were to go in and say, okay, I'm just going to pass in a string and this is going to be Daniel. We're now passing in a piece of data that is going to be assigned to this variable placeholder up here. So we can now use it inside our function. So if I were to go down here and say that I want to concatenate, so I'm just going to go ahead and say we want to concatenate our variable here. I'm just going to grab variable name which is the placeholder or the reference that we need to use inside this function. Save this one. You can now see that if I were to go inside an echoactive function down here, you can see we get hello, Daniel. And you can pass in as many parameters as you want. So you can go in here and say you want to add another name. So this could be last name. Uh, we can also pass in variable pet so we can you know, get the pet that we might have inside our household or something. Uh, so we can pass in many different parameters. And you can also see they don't actually light up. They're kind of like grayed out inside our editor, which means that we're not actually using this parameter inside our function. And just to mention it here, because you don't actually have to use these variables inside your uh, little function down here, but you do need to pass in the actual parameters inside when you call upon the function. I do have two more things I want to share with this example here. So let's go ahead and go back and just have variable name inside our function. So what we can do is we can also assign a placeholder. And by placeholder, I do mean a default value. So let's say I go down here and I decide not to pass anything inside my my function down here. And it's now giving me a error message. Hmm. Is there a way for us to run this function without having to pass in a parameter? And it just assigns a default value if we decide not to. Yes, there are. So what we can do is we can go in and inside the parameter inside our function up here, I can go ahead and assign my variable name to Daniel. Actually, let's go ahead and call it something else. So we get something else inside the browser. Here. So let's say Basse. So now if I decide to call upon this function down here without actually passing in a parameter, you can now see that it's going to assign Basse as a default value for this particular parameter here. However, if I go down inside my function and say, you know what, let's let's have it be Daniel and I save it, refresh, you can now see that, oh, OK, so there is a value passed into this function here. So we're not going to use the default value that I assigned inside this function here. The second thing that I want to show you is also in terms of something called type declaration, which is also something we received in PHP 7 point something, I do believe type declaration is something we have in most other programming languages. But for some reason, because PHP is a very loosely typed language, we don't have it and you don't have to have it inside PHP. But what you can do is you can go inside your parameter up here and say, OK, I do demand that whenever a user or whenever a programmer call upon this function here, it has to be a string that is passed into this function here. So what I can do is I can say I want to have this being a string data type. So whenever we pass anything in here, it has to be a string. So right now, if we were to save this, it is not going to give me any sort of error messages because it is a string. But if I were to go down here and say I'm passing in a number instead, I'm now going to get a error message. Actually, it's not going to give us any sort of error message because right now we don't actually have strict types enabled inside our code. So that is something we need to do first. Uh, so if you want to have these type declarations, you do need to make sure that the very first thing inside your script here is going to be a strict type declaration. So we're going to go to the top of our file. I'm going to open up my PHP tags and I'm just going to go ahead and close it again. And the first thing inside my PHP code is going to be a declare strict types equal to one, which means it's going to be true. So if we were to save this and then go down, you can actually see, oh, now we do actually get a error message because, oh, this is supposed to be a string, but we found a int number. And if we were to refresh inside the browser, you can see, oh, OK, so type error which means that we don't insert the correct type inside our function here. So type declaration is something that can help you make sure that the right data is being inserted inside the right functions. So this is something I do recommend using because this is something that I'm used to from other programming languages. But again, if you want to, you don't have to do any sort of type declaration inside your code. You can just delete this line of code here and delete the type declaration. Like you don't have to have it. It's very 
very much possible to do without, but I do recommend doing it because it is a habit I have from previous code that I have written in other programming languages out there. And there is a reason for why we have it. it is to make sure that we have one less error that we might accidentally do inside our code. So it's just kind of like a neat little thing we got added to PHP. So with my strict type declaration, I can now go in and pass in a string and then you can see, oh, now it works. So. And again, we can use functions for many different types of things. We can also go inside and say, this is going to be named calculator because we did create a calculator in our exercise in the last exercise. So what I can do is I can go in and say, I want to pass in a integer and I want to call this one num one. And then I can say, I want to pass in a second integer and this is going to be number two. And again, I'm just going to declare these strict type decorations here because I do think it's a good idea. Then I can go inside my code down here and say I want to run a calculation. So variable result is going to be equal to variable num1 plus variable num2. Again, this is a very simple calculator here. It, it only knows how to add apparently, but I'm just trying to prove a point here. So what I can do is I can return a value. So I'm going to return variable result. So now when I go in, I can actually call upon this function here and I do need to pass in the right data. So I can go in and say that I want to pass in a number. So it's going to be two and five. So we would do this refresh, then you can see we get seven. I do also want to mention here that we do have something called scope inside programming in all programming languages out there. And a scope is essentially where you can access certain variables. So right now inside this function here, this variable called variable result is a local scoped variable, which means that we can only access this variable from within this function here. One thing that I remember confused me when I started learning programming like many years ago is whenever I went up here outside the function and I would create a variable. So let's say I just create a variable called test and I'm going to set it equal to Daniel. Now, if I were to go inside this function down here, can I take variable test, go down and just let's say use it inside this function here. So if I were to say I want to return variable test, oh, we get a error message. Okay, so we can't do this because it is a undefined variable because it doesn't exist inside the scope of this function here. But what I can do inside this function here is I can actually go ahead and take my variable test and say that I want to grab a global variable within the global scope of my code. So I can go in anywhere inside the code here and say I want to grab a global variable or at least declare that this is a global variable that I want to have access to. And I can say I want to grab my variable test. And because I reference to a global variable in this sort of way, we can now use it inside our return down here. So I can actually go in, refresh, and then we can see we get Daniel. Again, I feel like I'm piling information on top of people here, but it is just important to know that we have something called scope and we will have a episode. I think we should do that in the next episode. Talk a bit about uh, scopes inside our PHP code because that will be a little bit more relevant to talking about global scopes and local scopes and that kind of thing. So for now, don't worry too much about scopes. Let's just go ahead and worry about creating functions inside our code like so. So you know how to create a function that has a particular piece of code that has a particular purpose in mind, uh, which you can then use inside your PHP application. I do know this is a lot of information I piled on top of people in this video here, but it is important to know what a function is because you will be using it constantly inside your code. So with that said, this is how you create a function. If you're still a bit confused about it, I do recommend rewatching the video uh, because you do need to know how to create a function. Okay. So with that said, in the next video, we're going to talk a bit about scopes inside PHP. And, and with that said, it's about to say it again. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you guys next time.